All right guys, today we're gonna to be replacing the right rear brake caliper on my 2001 Volkswagen Golf TDI. So here's the new unit right here. And here is the part number. So the first thing you wanna do is jack up the vehicle, make sure it's safe and secure before you start any work. As you can see, I have my jack stand right here and the jack up there for extra support. Okay, the first step, we're going to remove this 13 millimeter bolt for the brake line and have a rag ready because you'll have some brake fluid come out and leak on the floor. Okay, now we can remove these two 13 millimeter bolts to remove the whole caliper itself. There's one up above and one down below. Okay, now the caliper can be removed. Slowly pull it back, and then you'll have to disconnect that uh, parking brake cable. Alright, now we can disconnect this clip. So you stick a screwdriver in here and just pry right down, and the clip comes right off. Alright, you can see this cable is, I moved it over out of its position, and we need to just pull it and get it away from this bracket here. So I'm slowly going to work it around like that. And now this cable can just pull right through. This rubber boot um, will be somewhat of a, an issue because you can see there it's, it's split. So to try to pull it through slowly and carefully. Okay, as you can see, I'm slowly forcing it through. Um, it will go because um, it went in that way, so that's the way it'll come out. So that's that. Now you can get rid of this and then grab your new caliper. Make sure that it looks the same and that it is the same. All right. Now if you notice, there's a number here, 38. Just make sure that's the same when you have one there. You can see, well, maybe you can't. It's kind of hard to see, but this is 38. So just make sure they match. And this has a plug in it. You have to remove this plug uh, for your brake line. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, this is a 6 millimeter plug. Just go ahead and remove this. And I'll just throw it in the other one, just so I don't lose it. Okay, that's that. Now this is ready for installation. But before we do that, I like to lube these caliper pins. And these just pull right out, like so. And what you'll want to do is clean this old grease off and uh, this rubber boot will pull right off this other side of the pin and then um, go ahead and lube this up and in this kit TRW gives you some synthetic grease it was in the box here with the caliper so just go ahead and uh, put um, a little bit on that pin and then install the pin back in and then that's it all right, here is the pin with the rubber boot. Um, always examine the rubber boot, make sure there aren't any cracks. This one is in good shape. And then take your grease and put a light coating on this pin and then reassemble. Okay, as you can see, I have a nice light coating of grease on there. I slid the boot back on 
Now I'm going to slide the pin back in. And that boot just pops right over and that's it. Okay, so I'm going to take our new caliper here and I'm actually going to screw the brake line in just hand tight just so that it's in there and it stops dripping and then I'm going to bolt it up in there. All right, now we're ready to tighten these caliper bolts. So this is 13 millimeter, then you'll probably have to hold the pin, the head of that pin is 15 millimeter. These get torqued to 22 foot pounds. All right guys, now we can slide this parking brake cable up through the hole here in this bracket. So what you need to do is this rubber boot here, this will be a little bit of a hang up. Just pull it out like so, and then insert it through the back side, and that rubber boot will go through first. It's hard to do with one hand, but you need that rubber boot to go through first. Okay, you can see I got it almost all the way through. There it is. Now that allows this back end of the cable to seat up against this bracket nicely. And then um, you can pull this around and uh, insert it into the bracket here. But then you'll have to slide this boot back down and over. Okay, then get the clip and snap it up in the bottom here. So get your clip and then insert it like this. There we go. That's nice and secure. And last but not least, this end of the cable. Let's get it up in here. Okay, now for the last step, the nice thing about a new caliper is this moves nice and freely now. So you go ahead and push this down. It allows you to bring the cable behind it and into position. Okay, here's my Motive Products Power Bleeder. Now this is nice if you're doing brake jobs by yourself. You don't have anybody to pump the brakes while you um, loosen the bleed screw on the caliper. So. I bought this European um, adapter. This will screw on right on top of your uh, master reservoir. And they give you the seal. Go up in here. And then here is the um, power bleeder itself. This brass fitting screws on this other end. So you can use this for other vehicles. You'll just have to you know, purchase different fittings. Uh, different adapters, uh, rather, for um, different uh, reservoirs. But here's the part number for this one. This will fit on the Volkswagen Golf. And then here is the power bleeder. So what you do is you take your brake fluid, which is... Um, dot four. It'll show you right on top of the master. Dot four, which I have right here. I chose Liquamoly. You can use whatever you like to use, but uh, this is what I chose. I'm going to use Liquamoly. So unscrew this. Make sure you don't get any dirt to fall on this master. So make sure it's clean before you go ahead and unscrew this. And then I'm going to go ahead and unscrew, uh, screw my adapter right on top. Okay, I have the lid off the reservoir. Now I'm taking my adapter and I'm going to thread it right on top. A little tight down in here. Okay, there we go.
Okay, tighten that up. On this other end, the brass, I'll put some Teflon tape on here and uh, thread it into the other end of that hose on the uh, power bleeder itself. So I pressurized the system and everything's nice and tight and sealed up. I do not have any leaks. I have this pumped up to 10 PSI and it's holding there pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and add the fluid to the reservoir. Okay, I'm ready to start the bleeding process. I have the bleeder filled up with um, the brake fluid. It's about to this level. It's not pressurized yet, so I have my connections there. And in the back, I have a piece of hose on the bleed screw. So all I have to do is loosen this up and then watch the fluid come out. So we walk back up here and I'll pressurize the system up to about um, 15 PSI. Go ahead and loosen this bleed screw. Okay, you can see the fluid start to come out. Just look for air bubbles. You can almost tell the fluid color. Once uh, the new fluid comes through, you'll be able to see it through this clear hose. Okay, don't forget to put your dust cap back on. And then let's go up front. And we still have pressure in the power bleeder, so what you want to do is slowly remove the cap. Just loosen it slowly. You'll hear the pressure release. You'll see the gauge drop. That's it, then we can unscrew this part from the top of the reservoir. Okay, you can go ahead and put the cap back on. Just make sure it's full up to the, the max line, which is right here on the side of the reservoir. Just go ahead and put this back on. Okay, and then that's pretty much it. Just take it for a test drive and check for leaks back here. And that completes this job. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.